Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Definition and with summer finally upon us, what better way to celebrate with one of the most disturbing horror movies of all time. Midsommar is now out for worldwide release and throughout this video I'll be breaking down everything that you need to know about the film and its ending. If you've been following the channel closely then you'll know that last month I did a full breakdown of the movie's script and in this video I'll also be recapping some of the insights that it offers about the film and its characters. This is full spoilers ahead so if you haven't seen the movie yet and don't want anything ruined then I highly suggest that you turn off now. With that out of the way I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking this video. Now sit back, relax and let's get into my breakdown of Midsommar. I'm just going to call it Midsommar throughout this entire review. I know some people are calling it Midsummer, but Ari Aster did say that so I'm sticking by what he said. Anyway, at its core, Midsommar is a film about the breakdown of a toxic relationship that just so happens to be set against terrifying circumstances. We follow Danny, played expertly by Florence Pugh, who after the loss of her family due to a heartbreaking tragedy, finds herself alone with no one to turn to other than her boyfriend Christian. Christian was planning on breaking up with Danny, however due to the guilt that he feels over her loss and the eventual guilt of isolation that she puts on him, he postpones it and invites her on a trip to Halsingland, a Swedish festival that only happens once every 90 years. Danny throughout the film goes on an arc that is pretty much caused by the loss of her family and throughout the movie she drifts from group to group desperately seeking acceptance no matter the cost to those around her. One thing that you have to understand about the character and her motives is that she is deep down a person that because of the heavy loss in her life clings to any attention that comes towards her no matter how negative it may be. She is just as guilty as Christian is for committing to their relationship when both know that it is simply not working and this also adds weight to why the film ends the way that it does. Anyway, as the group arrive at Halsingland, they discover a place that like Danny and Christian's relationship seems picture perfect on the surface but is hiding a lot of secrets beneath it. The Hargas who Danny eventually ends up turning to come across as kind and welcoming people but deep down, similar to Christian, they have their own agenda. In this script, the Hargas are basically the product of generations of incest that hang boar carcasses from branches and look like 19th century farmers that spend most of their time dancing around the maypole. Though they seem like a group of hippies that hand out magic mushrooms like it's nothing, eventually their way of life and the rituals that they begin to carry out make it clear that things aren't right. They far outnumber the group and this makes them intimidating as they slowly start to pick everyone apart. The Hargas, as they're known, communicate through little gestures and expressions known as affects which hint at their true intentions without notifying others and early on these slight language barriers highlight that this is all an act for them. Every time one Hagen is born, the group plant a tree that is apparently tied directly to their life and as it grows, they do too. Their affection for Earth plays into the film later and they almost live their life purely based off nature alone. The Hargas view their lives as seasons with spring being their childhood and summer their young adulthood in which they go out on a pilgrimage. They then return after 32 to be an elder of the camp for autumn and in their winter years at the age of 72 they commit suicide by jumping off a cliff which is one of the film's most shocking moments. There's a strong theme of pregnancy laced throughout the film as well as forced death which is similar to how Danny found herself in such tragic situations through the loss of her family and during the film there's his message of out with the old and in with the new which itself can be viewed as the ending of one relationship in order to take on another. Danny at some points even struggles with this detachment and though she wants to leave Halsingland at several points is unable to due to one circumstance or another which is of course eerily similar to how she refuses to leave her relationship with Christian even though it's definitely for the best that she does. She's reminded by instances such as Simon and Connie that leaving your comfort zone can often have dire consequences and metaphorically them attempting to leave the camp only to die showcases why she is hesitant to break things off with Christian. It's only when she sees firsthand due to Christian sleeping with one of the local girls that things simply aren't going to work out. I, as I'm sure many of you watching, have been in similar circumstances relationship wise where though we may have not been cheated on, we still were unable to accept just how bad things really were until they were staring us in the face. Danny has to deal with this and it's pretty much the last straw, excuse the pun, for her to break things off and look for something else. We all wear masks when it comes to dealing with others and the dichotomy of Christian's true feelings juxtaposed with the way that he acts towards Danny show the duality in his motives. 
There's always something going on beneath the surface and this is further exemplified by the duality of the festival and most notably when Ulf wears Mark's skin later in the movie. Danny herself is made to dance around the maypole and similar to her relationship seems happy though there is subtext laced throughout that she is breaking inside because she's just so exhausted by the continual circle that she's going in both literally during the dance and figuratively in her life with Christian. Neither are willing to break it off till after this moment when Danny wins which shows that she has finally broken the circle of the toxic relationship. In the end she is pronounced the queen but unlike Game of Thrones this Danny sticks around. After being paraded through the field, kissed and adorned with flowers, she is finally ready to cut off the negative aspects of her life and join her new family. Symbolically, the burning of Christian and his friends in the final sacrifice show that she is letting go of all the things that have held her back and is ready to move on. For the finale, we watch as Christian melts into the fire and Danny is paraded as the new queen. She goes through a mix of emotions including excitement, fear, confusion, but ultimately she's happy. Happy that she finally has a new family and is accepted. The character has gone insane, but in her mind she is a queen, worshipped by all and finally living a life free of paranoia and distrust which ends the film. Whilst this could be taken as a happy ending for the character, sadly she is once again in a situation that seems like it's the best thing for her, but will ultimately end up pushing her further off the deep end. Her desperation to gain affection without questioning whether it's really worth it has placed her into a situation of dependency once more that will not strengthen her beyond how she was with Christian. As Danny has not learned to be strong on her own and is still reliant on others for happiness, she will therefore not build a foundation within herself in which she can live without approval from outside sources. It's a brilliant, tragic end that serves as a warning that if you're going to jump from relationship to relationship without working on yourself first, then you're always bound to repeat the things that have ultimately led to your downfall. Or it's just another Wicker Man ripoff that has no value. You decide, but I think most of us know there's a lot more to it than some of the critics are ultimately giving it credit for. So what did I think of the film? Well, as I'm sure you can guess, this again is another masterpiece by Ari Aster that once more cements the director as one of the best voices in horror that we currently have. This shows that things like The Conjuring Universe, which in my opinion have dumbed down horror a bit, aren't to be taken as this decade's example of the genre. And no, I don't think that this topped Hereditary, it's still horrifying. Midsommar is haunting from beginning to end and its use of vibrancy and over the top colours is what makes it so unnerving. Midsommar is as spellbinding as it is horrific and some of the gore really stands out here purely due to just how picturesque everything in the movie seems. There's very little to fault about the film and whilst it's got a pretty long runtime, it's still outstanding to behold. I can see lots of people wanting to book trips to the Maypole festivals next year purely off this film alone and it's a really unique take on a genre that has become pretty comfortable with just piling movies with lazy jump scares and moronic characters. When reading the script before I ever saw the film, I was really curious to see how this would play out on screen and it doesn't disappoint. Midsommar goes beneath the surface of human emotion and delivers a wholly satisfying scare fest that will stay with you long after you leave the theatre and that's why it gets a 9 out of 10. Obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the movie and what you took from its ending. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and make sure you check out my breakdown of this week's other big release Spider-Man Far From Home which will be linked at the end. I'll also leave a link to my original script breakdown for the film, so if you want a more in-depth look at how the story was created, then make sure that you give it a watch after this. I'll leave both linked at the end, so it's entirely up to you what one you want to choose, but I'll see you over at those videos. Cheers. This is a channel for people who are mad into movies, so if that's the kind of thing you like, hit subscribe. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this. I've been Definition, you've been the best, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.